Well, I started working on the water in 1976. Had quite a few crab boats in the family. I started crabbing and working along with my father. Then I started looking at the crabbing industry, the way it's going. And my son was real interested in what he wanted to do. And I said, well, he got to have a future, you know. Y'all ready? I can't see a future into crabbing. Show us the marshes. Yeah. <laughs> but I could see it into oysters. Whenever I taste an oyster for the first time, I don't put anything on it. But I always want to taste it for the first time by itself. It's funny, we were driving down to Florida and I was like, these days, this smells like Harris Neck oysters, <laughs> you know? It's marshy, they're marshy and funky, but they're also clean and salty at the same time. Where do they start from? What we normally look for is down here, the more the single. Well, I was practically raised on the boat. Pretty much. You know, uh, all the way throughout school, and, you know, when most kids had other little part jobs, I had a job on the boat with my dad. You know? mm -hmm. I didn't thought he was watching and listening. He was a little fellow on the boat, and I didn't know he he really picked it up. Yeah, dig around and find him. And uh, dad kind of wanted me to go to school and get my education, and I did that, you know. But I always end up working on the crab boat. So uh, we ended up, we kind of started out in the blind with these oysters, and here we are now, you know, it's a, it's a nice, beautiful thing now, you know. Now I gotta get that mud off of them. You gotta take care of them, about like changing a diaper on a kid. Yeah. You gotta stay behind them all the time. So you have to get that mud off of them. Clean them wash them, keeping make sure the they're off. clean, keeping a lot of the mud there off of them. Now. You can't just leave them out here. It's like a baby. Well, they are babies. <laughs> and until they get a certain size, then it's kind of like becoming an adult. Yeah. Like, Being a black person and having anything to do with food, you really, it's really a, a, a lot of backbone there. And I just would like to see more people of color in the room when it comes to dealing things, dealing with things like farming oysters and farming in general. May, okay. It'd be nice May, to see, right, well, right. you know, actually to know how many um, <laughs> black folks are actually working in that industry. Um, how can we buy from one another? How can we support one another? Let the boat go Mashama get it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm very much about that. This. He always goes, well, if you give me feedback, I'll listen. Just give me feedback, I'll listen. Let me hear what you got to say. He was like, tell me if I'm not doing the right thing. Tell me if I'm not. I said, okay. <laughs> well, you know, I learned that from my father. Yeah. When my father was, he didn't thought we was listening. But... When he passed on, I mean, I always, I've been working on the water since 1976. But for some reason, that that he had in him started coming out on me. Tell me if I'm not doing the right yeah. thing. And then I was like, all right. And it's funny because some people are like, well, I don't know. The club says, I know, we're going to get it. We'll get it. It takes time, you know, you're not going to bust out the first year yeah. and get what you need. You're going to, yeah. it's going to take a few years. And I have had people, man, why don't you go for yourself? Take a chance at it. And you know, I made my mind up. I said, this is my last chance. If I can't make it now, you know what I mean, what can I lose? I might as well go out trying.